someone like trips up the stairs, I hate to see that. Or someone like knocks a beer over at a party, I hate to see that. Oh, you hate to see that. You do hate to see that. You just hate to see that. Anything bad that happens to the Yankees, you hate to see that. Anything good that happens to the Red Sox, oh, you hate to see that. Yeah, you hate to see that. You just hate to see it. A lot of things you just hate to see lately. Frankie for sure still has like, hate to see it, PTSD. I just go, you hate to see it, and I walk away. Hate to see something like that happen. You hate to see it. Hate to see it, love it. Uh, the Red Sox swept the Yankees in four games at Fenway Park, and one of the grounds crew members at Fenway sprayed hubs in the face with, with a hose. I hated to see that because Hubs works really hard. I think he's a good person. And he had just seen his team lose four straight games to his arch rival. And now he's soaking wet. I don't know if his phone is maybe in his pocket. Hate to see that. Would, would hate to see him have to go get a new cell phone. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of hair to work with. What he does have, now it's messed up. Hate to see that. So there was just a lot about that that didn't sit well with me. Um, and, and what I really had to say to that was, uh, I hate to see it. Hi, I'm Trista Crick, Barstool's correspondent. When you're new here, a lot of words come up that you've never heard before. So I wanted to investigate what those words mean and where they come from. One phrase that kept coming up was, you hate to see it. So I sat down with some of the OGs to get the scoop. Hate to see it. I don't know, that's kind of something I've like said forever. Like I didn't, when it, when it caught on, I was surprised that like other people hadn't been saying that. I think that might just be like a New England thing. Mm. Like I, we grew up saying that. I'm giving credit to The Rocket on that one. The Rocket with his Yankee fan trolling. I believe, it, if I had to guess, it was uh, Mike Stanton striking out like seven times in a game. Giancarlo Stanton struck out five times in a game, twice. And it was the first time in like the uh, live ball era, which is like since 1920 that that had happened. But we were like two weeks into the season. So anything bad that happens to the Yankees, you hate to see that. Anything good that happens to the Red Sox, oh, you hate to see that. Frankie for sure still has like, hate to see it PTSD. Like he would wake up in the middle of the night being like, you hate to see it, you hate to see it. Because we just buried that into his brain. Jared really hammered that home. Every time the Yankees lost a game, every time something happened, you hate to see it. Hubs too. Hubs uh, took a beating with the with the you hate to see it last year. When your team's rolling, and that gets they won 108 games and uh, and the World Series, yeah, you're going to be as insufferable as possible. And he probably said that phrase a million times in 2018. You know, they were talking a lot of trash the whole year, and you just hated to see that they weren't even really much of a challenge on the way to win a World Series. So, like, that's really the origin of you hate to see it. So, at what point did it become low-key shade? Because I feel like right now you hate to see it as, I actually am enjoying seeing this, but you hate to see it. Mm, anytime I've said I hate to see something, I've genuinely despised what I saw. Is it sympathy or is it sarcasm? Mm, no, I generally feel bad. I feel bad for Jared. It sucks when, you know, his best friend, manager, Alex Cora, gets involved with one of the biggest cheating scandals in baseball history. Yeah, I feel bad when, when that guy gets fired. That, that stinks for Jared. Or when his best friend, also best friend player, Alex Bregman, is the ringleader in the cheating organization, cheating scandal. Yeah, you hate to see that too. So yeah, yeah, you feel bad for Jared. You fall over like, I hate to see that. Like something bad happens to someone you know and potentially even like, you hate to see it. So hate to see it is really just you employing Sympathizing. Empathy. Being a good guy, yeah. Just being like, wow, uh, there's a person who I care about a lot that's going through something and how do I empathize with them? How do I verbalize that I feel bad for them? Hate to see it. Deeply rooted in sarcasm. Yeah. It's only sarcastic, I would argue. There is like a part of you actually do hate to see that, but you kind of love it too. Jared seemed to think that it was a sincere form of empathy. Was that Jared or was that the rocket? I think it was Jared. Mm, I don't know, I've never, there have been few things I've hated to see. Like my dad died, hated to see that actually. That was pretty much it. Everything else I've been fine seeing. Anything you know, with your fellow employees that you hated to see? An all-time, an all-time hate to see it moment was after the Red Sox eliminated the Yankees in the 2018 Division Series. I think the Yankees had just gotten eliminated from the playoffs, if I remember correctly. That was a low point for Yankee fans, my, myself included. That was one of my favorite days in Barstool history. Do you remember when uh, the Yankees lost and you posted the video with 27 rings? Oh, the video I remember. Yeah. Yes, of course. The tensions were high that year in a Red Sox office. You got big personalities that are in your face and you just gotta be on your game. And I thought that when I saw the video from Liz at the stadium, you know, we had just lost. So Liz had made her 27 rings rant. Let me just say this, I've been a Yankees fan since I was, what, eight years old, and I will 
go to sleep tonight peacefully with my 27 championships knowing that I will never fucking wake up a goddamn Red Sox fan. Fuck you, Boston. And the Yankee fans were divided between the Yankee fans who like that type of swagger and, and hardo, like braggadocious vibe, and the Yankee fans who were more self-aware, like we're not actually better than Boston. Myself and a few other Yankee fans, we just, that's just not like how we. They were like, that's exactly what's wrong with the Yankee fans. We had no fight. We were Zero. a dead, dead team. Dead the only time we showed fight was in the ninth inning fight. and it just wasn't enough. Please. <laughs> Frankie Borelli took it upon himself to mansplain uh, to Liz. Frankie put his foot in his mouth. When your team loses, you don't be like, I want to become a Red Sox fan. We're just saying, like, they're in a better spot than us. Do you get that? Oh, do I get that? Uh -oh. Like, oh, no. are you mansplaining that we just. Oh, no. I feel like Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. That's mansplaining. So that was when all Yankee fans started cannibalizing each other. We were just sitting back, just like watching the world burn. I was just laughing my head off. The Red Sox beat us, and then the next day we're fighting at each other's throats. It's the ultimate defeat. That's an ultimate, you hate to see that.